Praise be Jesus Christ! My dear lovers of the Word of God, Welcome to Unbin He! Happy Easter! And Alleluia is our song. Our Divine Master is risen, and so do we. We celebrate new life now. We celebrate with Him, with Jesus, our Master, way, truth, and life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that had taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But they were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ would suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With, thy, with that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way, and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly raised 
and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Good News for Our Salvation Dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the third Sunday of Easter. We rejoice. We say, Alleluia. The Lord has risen. Our faith, our religion, Christianity itself is useless if the Lord had not risen. That is why Easter is the greatest celebration of every Christian. Bigger, greater, even than Christmas. Now, in our gospel, what a beautiful gospel account on the road to Emmaus. You see, these two disciples, one whose name we know by the name of Cleopas, they were stricken with grief. They were so sad. They were actually devastated. They had actually great hope while Jesus was with them and they were following him until he was crucified. They saw him died and was buried and they thought everything vanished. And so these two were on their way home to their village in Aeos, maybe to go back to ordinary lives that they had. But you see, Christianity is not that. Christianity would end up in a celebration. And here comes the Lord walking with them, playing I do not know with them. That's seven miles. Seven miles of Jesus telling them, making things clear to them, interpreting to them the things about the scriptures, beginning with Moses, that is to say the Pentateuch, and then the prophets. How beautiful is this gospel? Because this points us, this points to us to spiritual nourishment we need as we go on living our Christian life. One is the Holy Word. The other is the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, when Jesus was breaking the bread, it's there that they came to recognize Jesus. Their eyes were open and they were say, saying to one another, were not our hearts burning while he was interpreting to us the things about the scriptures? They already walked seven miles and they have to go back. But this time, not stricken with grief, this time energetic. They are full of joy. So they walking for 14 miles is nothing for a person so full of joy. They wanted to tell the good news that Jesus actually was alive. He was discovered in the Word and in the Eucharist. This is the message for us, brothers and sisters. Jesus is in the Word. In fact, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, we are told, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, we are fed every time we listen to the Word of God, every time we read the Holy Bible. Let's read the Bible. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, 
Yahweh complained that His people are being destroyed because of ignorance. Let's learn from the Word of God. As we learn it, it burns our heart. It feeds us. And completing the nourishment process, the Holy Eucharist. There we meet Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. You see, we have a long way to go from this earth to heaven. It's a long journey. We need nourishment. This are, this, this are our nourishment. The Holy Word, the Bible, and the Eucharist. In particular, the Holy Communion. So many Catholics do not really care about receiving the Holy Communion. Please stop doing that. Whatever it is that obstructs you from going to Jesus, receiving Him in the Holy Communion, now do something. Do something. Repent of your sins. Go to confession. We have a lot of time to make sure that that which obstructs a person from the Lord be taken away so that the next time we go to the Mass, we celebrate the Eucharist, we meet Jesus, we receive Jesus in the Holy Communion. He is our spiritual provision on our way to heaven. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank Father Randy for reminding us that if Christ has not risen from the dead, our faith is worthless. We are still buried by our sins. He echoes too the words from St. Paul. All we who made sacrifices and suffered and died with our Master are rewarded with a gift of resurrection. That is why there is no reason to become sad. Everybody should celebrate today with joy that exudes salvation. The redemption that we received should be shared and bear fruit. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in faith. Thank you for your trust as we continue to share with you God's message of salvation. And may the Word of God grow in our mind, in our will, and in our heart. Happy Easter! Francis said, every family should be holy. Hmm. Holy? Hmm. So that means our family should pray always and our family should keep our faith. And finally, our family should welcome joy. I wish our family will always be holy. In response to the love of God, 
who has called me to follow more closely Christ the Master, way and truth and life among the daughters of St. Paul. to the love of God, who has called me to follow more closely Christ the Master, way and truth and life, among the daughters of St. Paul, I, in full freedom, renew the offering of myself to the Father, having been consecrated by Him in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I recommit myself to live in communion with my sisters and to be faithful to the charism of the Founder, dedicating myself in the Church to evangelization with the means of social communication.